I'm having breakfast in the delightful Riverview Hotel in Bagan after arriving last night. As the sun rises and the river traffic increases, I have that good to be alive feeling. The buffet breakfast is good. The location, straight out of a Kipling novel, and alongside me, the Irrawaddy, that renowned road to Mandalay, making its way from Mandalay to the sea. This is my second visit here, and I wanted to shoot it in 4K. The hotel, beautiful and peaceful. The staff and facilities, excellent. The pool and gardens having a traditional design and using local materials. And the location, right in the middle of everything. The horse and cart being the way to go. I hired one for the day and I was soon heading toward the famous temples. The morning sun in January, very pleasant. How old are these temples? How many are there? During the height of the kingdom of Pagan, between the 11th and 13th centuries, there were over 10,000 Buddhist temples, pagodas and monasteries in the Bagan Plains alone, of which, believe it or not, over 2,200 temples and pagodas still survive to the present time. Some a thousand years old, that's why it's one of the main tourist destinations in Burma, perhaps even in Asia. The Ananda Temple is first stop. It's the most famous of all the temples, built in 1105. The spire was gilded on its 900th anniversary in 1990, and it's highly revered in Burma. It houses four standing Buddhas, each one facing the cardinal directions of north, south, east and west. The temple is said to be a fusion of Mon and Indian styles of architecture. It's a fascinating place with some interesting architectural styles. There's a legend about the building of this temple. Eight monks who approached the king seeking alms described to him the Nandamula cave temple in the Himalayas where they had meditated saying it was so beautiful. The king, pleased with their description, asked them to build a temple in the middle of the Bagan plains that created cool conditions within. After the monks finished constructing the temple, the king, wishing to retain the uniqueness of the temple, you guessed it, he had the monks killed to ensure that no similar temple could be built elsewhere. Thus its design is unique. The next temple I visited was the Tatbinyu Temple, or the Omniscient built in the mid-12th century and adjacent to the Ananda temple. And outside was a bell. These bells are often rung when a Buddhist comes to pray. There are many temples here, and yet each one is distinct in its own way. Whenever I'm in an ancient site that is thus preserved, I always wonder what went on here down the centuries. I also marvel at the way they even managed to build such large and impressive monuments that after hundreds of years still impress.
inevitably among the temples of the tourist shops. Though some of them contain the usual tourist stuff, there are some local ethnic handicrafts for sale. my first day, but an intriguing experience. The next day I decided to try, which for me was a first, an electric bike. These electric bikes are a lot of fun. They cost one dollar an hour. The battery will last all day and uh, they enable the tourists to get around and see everything even on the small little tracks. You'll notice they're also quiet so I set off to explore on my own cheaper than a horse and cart quicker and with the freedom to go where I want. Every now and then coming across the tourist shops that surround the temples. Clothes and handicrafts being the main things to buy. Next place, the Tilomindo Temple, surrounded by trees and shops, and a very nice place to stroll around. The low cost of living here, coupled with low wages, means the cost of these goods is relatively low. I get to walk around a near thousand year old temple whilst doing some window shopping and occasionally get to meet local people who spoke a little English. This is really an excellent place to visit.